SpaceX ambitions to ramp up its Starship program in Florida this year now face a potential shutdown by NASA following the recent explosion during Starship Flight 8. What are NASA's specific concerns about having Starship in Florida? And when can we expect Elon Musk's aspirations to launch Starship from the state to come true? Let's dive into that in today's episode of NR Studio. The Starship Flight 8 test culminated in a mid-flight explosion of the spacecraft's upper stage over the Caribbean, occurring about nine minutes after liftoff. It marked the second consecutive failure of a Starship upper stage, echoing the explosion experienced during Flight 7 in January 2025. The series of setbacks has cast doubt on the reliability of the Starship system, a key element of SpaceX strategic initiative to expand operations to Florida's space coast, which includes Kennedy Space Center, Case OSC, and Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. SpaceX has big aspirations, investing at least $1.8 billion in Florida to build new launch pads and facilities, including the Gigabay Processing Center at Kennedy Space Center, which is designed to facilitate Starship launches in late 2025 or 2026. The company plans to relocate most of its Starship launch operations from Texas to Florida, taking advantage of the area's established infrastructure and favorable position for eastward trajectories across the Atlantic. However, the failure of Flight 8 has the potential to create some complications for the timeline and strategic plan. There were initially delays regarding the upcoming scheduled flight. The Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, mandated that SpaceX conduct an accident investigation into the Flight 8 failure, mirroring the protocol established for Flight 7. The FAA is required to approve the investigation's findings and subsequent corrective actions before granting permission for additional launches. Given the two consecutive upper stage losses, scrutiny is likely to increase, which could delay SpaceX's ability to obtain regulatory approval for launches in Florida. The Air Force is currently conducting an environmental assessment of Starship operations in Florida, with a preliminary report anticipated in the spring of 2025, followed by a final decision later that year. Repeated failures could exacerbate concerns about safety and environmental implications, delaying progress in this process. Furthermore, challenges associated with Starship could impact the rocket's operational readiness in Florida. Repeated upper stage failures indicate technical difficulties, likely related to engine reliability or propellant systems that SpaceX must address. Until these issues are resolved, the launch of a more congested and complex spaceport in Florida, compared to Boca Chica, Texas, could be considered hasty. Cape Canaveral serves as a critical hub for high-priority missions conducted by NASA and the Department of Defense, so any Starship incident could potentially disrupt other operations. Laura Forsack, a consultant specializing in local space companies, expressed her concerns. If a rocket as large as Starship were to have an incident near or on the launch pad, it could potentially disrupt the entire operational framework of Cape Canaveral, the world's most active spaceport. An incident on the Space Coast could trigger major upheavals and potentially cause major financial setbacks. Although rockets are currently launched from Cape Canaveral, it is still important to ensure that the airspace and maritime zones are clear of all aircraft and ships. As observed, the falling debris forced the Miami and Orlando airports to suspend all outbound flights for more than 15 minutes. As a result, this resulted in significant delays for the rest of the night, which was costly for the aviation sector. Unsurprisingly, this development has raised concerns for NASA and the Department of Defense, as their missions are often related to government interests and are critical to national security. Progress is hampered, so delays are highly undesirable. Furthermore, it is crucial to maintain the current infrastructure at the two Florida launch sites, not only because of their complex design, but also because of their large financial investment. Starship's current unreliability raises significant concerns about its potential to compromise critical infrastructure, posing a catastrophic risk. Furthermore, the visibility of the flight aid failures, with debris visible from Florida, the Bahamas, and beyond, has raised significant safety concerns among local stakeholders, including rival launch providers, United Launch Alliance and Blue Origin. These entities have previously advocated for increased scrutiny of Starship's Florida plans, citing the potential danger of collateral damage from explosions. Such pressure could sway regulatory agencies or force SpaceX to change its schedule. 
Instead, SpaceX and various experts argue that these challenges are integral to its accelerated, iterative development methodology, where failures yield critical insights for system improvement. Elon Musk has characterized the Flight 8 explosions as negligible setbacks, suggesting a quick recovery for future testing. Additionally, many have noted that Florida's unobstructed eastward launch trajectory increases its appeal as a launch site, despite these incidents, because debris falls over the ocean rather than over densely populated areas. I don't believe this event will be a deterrent to SpaceX's ability to launch Starship from Florida. Rather, it increases Florida's appeal. According to Greg Autry, Assistant Provost for Space Strategy and Commercialization at the University of Central Florida, the CAPE's launch trajectory remains unconstrained by population and extends unimpeded toward Africa. Progress toward Florida is fundamentally dependent on pragmatic steps underway now, including the barge transport of Starship and its super-heavy boosters from Texas, as well as the construction of facilities like Gigabay. These initiatives can proceed independently of the test flight results, depending on SpaceX's ability to effectively address the underlying factors that contributed to the failure. In addition to its implications for SpaceX launch operations in Florida, the Starship Flight 8 explosion also has a negative impact on NASA's Artemis program, which aims to return astronauts to the moon. The latest setback to Starship Flight 8 has raised concerns about the ambitious timeline for NASA's Artemis 3 mission, which is still projected to land humans on the moon in 2027. The setback poses a significant risk of exacerbating existing delays in the Artemis program, which aspires to reintroduce astronauts to the lunar surface for the first time since Apollo 17 in 1972. NASA has put its trust in SpaceX Starship to serve as the human landing system, HLS, responsible for transporting astronauts from the Orion spacecraft in lunar orbit to the moon and returning them safely, despite two recent Starship upper stage failures. The reliability of this critical component is currently under scrutiny, raising uncertainty about its readiness for such a high-stakes mission. Prior to this incident, the Artemis program was already struggling with significant challenges. Significantly behind schedule and billions over budget, the effort has faced technical challenges, supply chain disruptions, and a fluctuating political agenda. In a 2021 report, NASA's Inspector General indicated that the Artemis III launch, originally scheduled for 2024, was unlikely to occur before 2026. Subsequent delays have now extended that timeline to 2027 at the earliest. The importance of Starship's role is significant. Unlike conventional landers, its innovative reusable design and large payload capacity, up to 150 metric tons to low Earth orbit, have the potential to transport not only astronauts, but also critical infrastructure needed for sustainable lunar exploration. However, a series of recent test failures have shown that SpaceX faces significant engineering challenges to overcome, from stabilizing the upper stage to ensuring the safe reentry and landing capabilities essential to lunar missions. These scenarios have significant geopolitical implications. NASA and U.S. government officials have positioned Artemis as a key battleground in the contemporary space race against China, which harbors its own aspirations for lunar exploration. China's space agency has set its sights on achieving a Taikonaut lunar landing by the early 2030s, backed by a comprehensive program that includes the Chang'e mission and aspirations for a lunar research station. The United States views the return to the moon not just as a scientific achievement, but as a strategic initiative to maintain its supremacy in space, secure vital lunar resources such as water ice, essential for fuel and life support, and to lay the groundwork for a legal framework governing international activities in space. Any Starship failure would be more than a technical hiccup. It would likely be a setback to America's assertion of dominance in this burgeoning era of lunar exploration. Compounding these concerns is the overarching vision associated with Starship's evolution. President Donald Trump, after securing re-election in March 2025, has made space exploration a fundamental aspect of his agenda actively promoting the ambition of landing American astronauts on Mars. This aspiration aligns with space CEO Elon Musk, who also currently oversees Trump's Office of Government Efficiency, dubbed Doji. Musk has consistently championed Starship as the cornerstone of his interplanetary aspirations, engineering it to be the most capable launch system ever built, with the capacity to carry up to 100 passengers 
and substantial cargo to Mars. Once fully assembled, Starship surpasses the Apollo-era Saturn V rocket in stature. However, its immense potential remains largely speculative until it can reliably perform in Earth orbit and on lunar missions and beyond. Was the Starship Flight 8 explosion a setback for SpaceX? Undoubtedly it was. They aspired to achieve much greater progress with each test. Of course, each test yields new data that allows for further refinement, so it certainly isn't a total failure. However, it didn't make the progress they had hoped for, Fortsick said. Although the super heavyweight booster was once again secured by the launch tower arm, the spacecraft itself was ultimately deemed a loss. SpaceX had initially aimed to successfully return the spacecraft to the launch pad during Flight 9, its next mission. For a time, it appeared that Starship's development was progressing well. The company consistently showed progress with each individual flight. However, during Flights 7 and 8, the spacecraft failed to survive for even 10 minutes before being declared a total loss. Although SpaceX asserted significant modifications to the spacecraft's design for the latest flights, specifically adjustments to the size and orientation of the flaps to improve re-entry resilience, it was noted that the engines failed during the latter two flights. This caused the ship to fall back into the atmosphere, burning up twice over southern Florida. The impact of Flight 8 was profound. Watching Starship fall after our exhaustive efforts resonated deeply. It was painful for us because our concerns were rooted in an understanding of what was truly at stake. But discomfort was a price to pay for progress. We will endure this loss, rise above it, and fight with an unprecedented spirit. A Starship engineer known as Xander on X, formerly Twitter, wrote, Keep moving forward, never give up. After Falcon 1 Flight 3, we came to the profound realization that the night is often darkest just before the dawn. Keep your resolve and keep pushing. We will reach our goal, John Edwards, SpaceX Vice President of Falcon Launch Vehicles, said in his response on X. However, it is a fundamental truth that building a rocket is a daunting task. Rocket building is a complex and unforgiving pursuit by nature, a reality that SpaceX is all too familiar with. The Falcon 9, today's cornerstone of the space industry, delivering launches with remarkable consistency and without incident, did not simply materialize in perfect conditions. The Falcon 1, its predecessor, suffered several setbacks before successfully reaching orbit in 2008, paving the way for its successor. Despite the success of the Falcon 9 launch, challenges continued to arise. A notable incident occurred on September 1, 2016, at Launch Complex Zero at Cape Canaveral, when a Falcon 9 exploded during pre-launch checks. The explosion destroyed a $200 million Israeli communications satellite Amos 6 and sent shockwaves reverberating through structures miles away. Fortunately, no injuries occurred. However, the incident highlighted the inherent risks associated with rocket development. It also delayed SpaceX schedule for crewed missions. NASA had set a goal of sending astronauts aboard a Falcon 9 to the International Space Station in 2017, marking a major milestone associated with the commercial crew program. The explosion caused by a malfunction in a high-pressure helium tank required a comprehensive investigation and subsequent redesign, which delayed the first crewed launch until May 30th, 2020, which was called Demo-2. This historical record highlights that even SpaceX's most reliable systems have endured turbulent journeys, a lesson that is now echoing through Starship's intense testing. I have every confidence that the SpaceX team will continue their tradition of iterative improvement, refining their current design to peak efficiency in its category, alongside exceptional reliability. According to Autry, the act of consistently causing disruption has been an integral part of their methodology. The length of time it will take for Starship to gain Federal Aviation Administration approval to return to flight remains uncertain. According to the FAA, an investigation into the incident is mandated. The FAA will actively participate in every phase of the SpaceX-led accident investigation and is required to support SpaceX's final report which includes any proposed corrective actions. Resumption of flight operations is contingent on the FAA's assessment that any systems, processes, or procedures associated with the incident do not pose a threat to public safety. That's all for today's episode. See you in the next episode, and thank you for joining us.